Okay, um, next, so we've looked at sequence, um, getting our instructions in the correct order. Um, we looked at selection, where we've considered the use of if then else or uh, the case statement. With the case being more efficient if we have to do um, lots of selections. And then finally, we're going to look at iteration. Uh, so, iteration basically just means repeating things. And there are a couple of ways that we can iterate. Uh, the first method that we're going to look at is what we call a count controlled loop. Okay, so uh, count controlled. And it might be, if you're asked about this in a test, it might be presented to you as a count controlled loop. Um, and that's a fancy way of saying, well, we know how many times we want the loop to run. Uh, and if we know how many times we want the loop to run, we need to use a for loop, okay, or for next. Okay, count controlled for next loop, okay. So just associate those together um, because you could be asked about a count controlled loop, okay, and then obviously you know different loops, but if you hadn't associated it, you might not be able to answer it. So let's say, for example, um, we want to do a loop that's going to run 30 times. So we know we can say for count, we need we need something that's going to keep track of where we are within the loop. So that'll be count equals 1 to 30. So count will initially take the value 1, then 2, then 3. When it gets to 30, it'll stop. So we know how many times we want this loop to run. Now, importantly, um, once you've processed everything you want to process in the loop, it's good practice to put this here. So we've got set up our loop, we're going to do stuff, which at the end of the loop we do the next one, so we go back up. Once count gets to 30, it can't go any higher, the program will carry on. So um, let's put something in between here, so we could just say uh, output count is count. So we like put count is 1, then it go to 2, count is 2, and so on. Okay. Um, so we could put that into a question. Let's say um, ask for 30 numbers and output total. So this, this could be a small part of another question. Um, so first thing we're going to do is we know how many times our, our loop's going to run. So we can say for count equals 1 to 30. Um, so we need to ask for a number. So we'll put a message on the screen. Into number. We'll then input that and we'll store it in the variable number and we need to total them as they're being entered so we say total equals total plus number okay so straight away um, we haven't got a value for total and this is the way I would answer it if I was answering it in an exam. You haven't got time to design, you haven't got time to plan where everything's going to go. So you react to the, to the answer as you're doing it. So I haven't got a value for total. So I know let's just declare that at the start. So total equals zero. So every time we go around, we're now adding number to total. So that's our loop finished. So now we're just going to say next count. So we'll go around 30 times, okay? And then um, finally, once the loop's finished, we can output total is, and then total, okay? So that's the first type of iteration where we have what we call a count controlled loop. Oh, count controlled loop, we know how many times the loop needs to run, so we use a for next loop. Okay, so it might be worth maybe rewinding the video, have a little practice of writing out a for next loop, and just remember that we call that count controlled. Thank you very much.